Hey everyone, I'm out here in the garage and I've got this one-year-old portable AC unit that I got for free. And that's because it has a broken blower wheel. So I'm going to talk about how I'm going to address this issue and also another issue that I discovered. So stay tuned. So if you're new to the channel, I just want to welcome you here and hopefully you'll consider subscribing if you like what you see. Also check out DIY Apprentice on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I post lots of pictures and videos on those platforms before I post anything on YouTube. And occasionally I will post things on those platforms I don't post on YouTube. Also check out the website at DIYApprentice.com. So what is the story on this AC unit? So basically I've been working from home for about the last three months with all this health crisis stuff that's going on out there. And I work in an upstairs office and it gets pretty hot in there in the summertime. So I started looking around for an AC unit, couldn't find one that I really wanted to pay a lot of money for because as I've talked about I think in the garage video that I don't like to pay for expensive appliances. I like to find things secondhand that I can fix up and then put them back into use. So this particular AC unit was available on offer up for free and the previous owner mentioned that it had a bad blower wheel and you can see right here that's a bad blower wheel. The one thing she did not mention though is that there's also an FL light that comes on on the unit. An FL usually means full meaning the bottom tray on the unit is full of water. So when that happens the AC unit won't run. So I'm going to talk through how I'm going to address both of those issues. So let's get into it. All right, so our subject is this GE 10,000 BTU unit. The model number is APC D10 AXWWL1. And it includes three modes, cool, dehumidify, and fan. And it's purported to cool a 350 to 450 square foot living space. And other than the issues I described, the unit appears to be in working order. All right, so I've got the unit plugged in. You can see FL is showing right there on the display. Might be a little hard to pick up on camera here. Uh, what I'm going to do now is hit the reset on the plug. Hold that down. And it's going to go ahead and reset. You can see the mode is cool. It's on a medium fan setting. And then FL just showed up again. And there it goes, it shut off, you can see FL, and then also this red light is blinking full. So that is about all it will do right now. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take it apart and see what we can find. Alright, so i got the unit up here on my workbench, and before I get crazy and start just pulling screws out, as I talked about in another video, I think it was a garage update video, I used to actually work on plasma and LCD TVs. And of course I work on cars too. So I always try to have some sort of a system with regard to how I remove the screws just to make sure I put them back in their proper spots. Because these screws are not all the same length, not all the same type. So I got to be very careful about that. So normally what I'll do is make a little diagram. Uh, I know on this one, this has about I think three or four different types of screws. So I just number them like this is a type one. These two up top are type 2. So this may not be exactly right because the previous owner did take this thing apart. And I got a bag of screws when I got the unit. So I tried to put things back in the spots that I thought they made sense to go in. So then what I'll do is I'll take a bag and I'll label it like in this case I'll just put a 1 on it. And I put all the number 1 screws in this bag. So I also may label the bag by part. So in this case blower. And then I would put all the blower screws in here if they're all the same size. Uh, so whatever's going to keep you sane, whatever's going to get this thing back together and functioning is what I would do. Alright, so now that I've got my system down in terms of how I'm going to remove the screws and bag them and tag them, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and start removing this back panel. This needs to come off first. I've got this little plastic pry tool that I'm going to use as I go along too. So the filter's out. Alright, 
so there are two screws on the side that are really hard to reach so you could use a tool like this it's got a Phillips in on this end and a Phillips in on this end. this one's a number one this one's a number two so that will get in there get that out you can also go with a longer bit like this two more down here Then there are two screws that hold these two cases together right down at the bottom and there's also two more at the top we'll see later. I'm going to take these two caps off next. To get this back cover off we also need to lift the top off so we'll do that next. Alright so to get the top off you can't just pull it off you probably break something so what I'm going to do is go ahead and use my pry tool lift up back here. kind of come around this way pop that up now just keep my fingers in there to hold that open Do the same thing on this side there we go there we go and that comes off so it's a little nerve-wracking to take that off but that's how it comes off now one thing you may want to do is take this cover off. This is the cover for the sensor so you don't lose that and just put that in a bag somewhere. Alright so there are two screws one here and one here and then we can separate these two halves of the case. Now you notice right there they're joined so you gotta slide this apart. You gotta do that on the bottom also. There you go. All right, so let's get the front half of the case off now. There's one screw right there. All right, so the last thing is there are two screws down here in the front we need to take out also. All right, so we should be able to take this off now. So one of the first things I noticed when I opened the case, you can see right here, this is broken off. So this is our water uh, level sensor. So this was in the case like that, and of course it's pressing up, which means that the full light's going to come on. So what I've done now is hung this outside the case, and then I'm going to plug in the unit, and then hopefully we won't get FL on the display here. So that appears to have been our issue here, and what I'm going to do now is press on the sensor and see what happens. So I'm pressing on the sensor, you can see FL showed up on the display, so I think that was our problem, that it actually had broken off the stud in here, so we're going to have to figure out a way to put this back on that stud. Alright, so let's take a look at our other issue, which was our main issue, and that is this blower wheel. You can see it's pretty badly destroyed. I suspect that somebody probably put a toy in here or something somehow and it got caught in there and did some serious damage. So one of the problems with this unit and that's probably why the owner decided to get rid of it is that I cannot find this part anywhere. I have looked high and low. I've looked all over the place trying to find this part. They do not sell this on any of the repair sites, you know, like e-replacements or repair clinic or any of those other sites. I couldn't find it on eBay. I did a ton of searching for this part. So uh, I had to actually improvise and instead what I'm going to do is go with a part that does not work specifically for this unit. It's actually for, I think it's for an LG unit. Uh, and that wheel actually is smaller than this one, so I'll talk about that when I get to that stage. But we need to get this apart first in order to get to that where that wheel goes inside this blower housing. Alright, so I'm going to take this grill off here. There are two screws, one here and one there. So in order to get this out, there are a couple screws here, and then there's a screw right there.
there is a screw on this side that needs to come out also. And on this side, I think there's another one here. It would appear at this point that this would just come out, but it's not going to. We need to be able to lift this tray up a little bit. So I've got two screws, one on this side and one on the other side. All right, so now this should come out. Now, you need to be also very careful of the fins on here too. Let me lift this up. That comes right out. All right, so there is our blower housing. We need to remove the screws here so we can separate the two halves of this case. So we'll do that now. There are, let's see here, there's one up here. So if you look at this case, you can see it's got a flare design to it. If you look at the back of the wheel, it's got a little bit of a flare to it too. So trying to find a wheel that would fit and then all the clearances and, and also making sure that it's going to fit on this particular stud. This is a 5 16th shaft right here. So if we get something larger like a 3 8 that's not going to work very well because it's going to wobble. And so that was part of the problem is trying to find something that would work specifically for this blower uh, housing. All right, so to get this off, I know people who do this for a living probably have some sort of a puller or they have some tricks for how to get this off. What I did was I put a little bit of tape on the motor and then I just put my pliers right in here and just kind of lift it up and just spun this around, did that around here until it came all the way off. So we've got clearance issues. We've got to make sure also that we have the right size shaft. Uh, we also have to make sure that when we put this part on, that it's going to cover it and that it's not going to rub. So that was a very challenging thing. I looked everywhere under the sun trying to find a replacement part. Couldn't really find one. And then I came across this one. This one here. And you can see it's quite a bit smaller than the original. So I did a little research and I found that some of the other uh, portable AC units actually have a blower wheel this size or a little bit bigger. And some of those are 12,000 BTU units. This one happens to be a 10,000 BTU unit. Find out where the where it is. That slides right on. All right, so you can see right here, I have actually rebuilt this little stud, and I'm going to place it on top of this one. So I'm going to kind of walk you through how I did this. So this is the product right here. It's called Instamorph. It's a moldable plastic. That's what I use to recreate the stud that this sensor sits on. So how these work is you can see right there, they're tiny little beads. You throw these in hot water up to about 150 degrees and you can mold just about anything you want. All right, so there's our hot water. Now I have warmed it up to about 190 degrees to give myself a little bit more working time. It's usually not advisable according to the instructions to do that because it makes it harder to handle, of course, when it's that hot. But I've got some gloves on, so hopefully we should be okay here. So we don't need very much of this stuff. Actually, a little bit goes pretty far with this, I found. That's probably about enough right there. See, it starts out as these white little balls, and it starts to turn into a clear as they start to melt. I'll just start kind of kneading this here. You can see a little bit goes a pretty long way. And what I'm going to do is knead it because I need to be able to fit some of it in here. I don't want to be trying to squish this whole big part in there. I'm going to need it so that it's just a little bit smaller than the opening. So I'll just do that on the end. That's probably about good right there. I'm going to drop it back in the water again just to make it a little bit more pliable so we can form our shape that we want. And meanwhile what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some tool oil because this stuff actually sticks to some plastics. So I'm going to put a little bit of tool oil on a paper towel. Just a little bit, not too much. And then I'm going to run that around the outside of this bracket. And then also inside. And that will allow this plastic that we stuff in here to release. 
Okay, I think that's going to work for us. We'll give that a shot now. And all I want to do is very slowly just push this in there. I don't want to stuff it in there because we still need to have a little bit of a piece down here because some of the uh, the stud broke off. So we need to have a little bit of a base to add on to this here. So I'm going to stuff this in there like that. And pull that out. And there's our shape. We've got a little bit of material there to recreate the base also. So we're going to let that set up. Let that cure. It's probably going to take a good 10 minutes. All right, so there is our recreated stud tip. This is now cured. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and cut this little piece off the end, this little tip there. So I'll go ahead and cut this off the end with the utility knife. Cut that little nub off. All right, so that's what we're left with there. All right, so that fits perfectly in there. What I'm going to do now is drill a hole in the top. So I've got a center punch here. And I'll just go ahead and put that in there. Okay. I've got a little divot right there in the top. You can see. I'm going to keep that in there. All right, so now that I've got my center hole established, I'm going to use a very low torque drill so this tool that I use a lot for removing screws and doing other really delicate work. I'm going to use this. I've got this on high right now. I'm going to switch it to low, see if that'll work for us. I'm going to start to drill a hole right through here. This is a 764 bit. So I'm probably got to switch to high here, it looks like. straight down okay get this out of the way now I'm just going to finish the hole all, all the way down just straight down try to maintain it and keep it straight I probably also would wear uh, some leather palm gloves or something like that so you don't drill into your hand but I'm gonna take a chance here so again this <clears throat> this is me experimenting with this a little bit I did actually make a much better attempt at this before and uh, so that part is the one I'm gonna use so go ahead and screw this in I can feel it's making the threads for us there. All right, so that's screwed down all the way. Now let's go ahead and back this out. There's our hole. So, of course, we're going to have to shape this. We've got to cut this off. We have to cut inside the case now just to make sure this looks good and make sure that this is nice and level so that this sits properly inside the case. All right, so I've got the Dremel here with the cutoff wheel. I'm going to go on a very low speed because this is plastic and I want to be careful about not breaking it and or uh, not melting it. So we're going to see how this goes and hopefully I can cut this off fairly flat here. All right, so that looks pretty flat. I'm gonna stop right there while I'm ahead so I don't mess this up. And what I'm gonna do now is grab our other piece and see what we can do with that. All right, so I don't mar this piece. I was gonna actually put it in the vise, but instead I put it in this clamp, which has these plastic uh, ends on it. And then I put that in the vise instead. All right, so there is our plastic piece that we cut right there. Um, that's ready to go on. I'm going to shape it also after I get it glued on there. My first attempt at attaching the newly molded stud tip in the case by using Gorilla two-part epoxy failed miserably, as did my second attempt using the Gorilla superglue. 
So I went off to do some research and decided to instead finish up the blower wheel installation. See links in the description below. Comment, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check us out on social media. And thanks for watching.